Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Chelsea fans. Welcome back to the show. Hope you're doing well and keeping safe. I'm Daniel Childs. This is the Son of Chelsea podcast. This is Let's Talk Chelsea. We're going to be breaking down the latest Chelsea news. Cristiano Ronaldo being linked again and why Todd Bowley should resist signing him in January. Jude Bellingham, Declan Rice. I'm also going to touch on the goalkeeping situation because I think that is a big debate at the moment surrounding Chelsea. So we're going to get into all of that. Um, As I say, hope you're doing well. Hope you're enjoying the World Cup. The World Cup is fully up and running. Um, It's kind of exactly what I wanted it to be. Just sort of a break from Chelsea. I've been able to watch football, enjoy it, see England win, which is positive. You know, celebrating a a team you're supporting, winning a game and feeling good about them and watching them play attacking football in a 4-3-3. Um, as I said the other day in my, in my last podcast, is is a rarity this season watching Chelsea. So it's been a good break and it'll be interesting to see. We've had some massive shocks. Saudi Arabia beating uh, Argentina, Japan beating Germany. We may see some more, hopefully none involving England. And hopefully the only shock is England going all the way and lifting uh, the World Cup at the end of uh, December. So we will see. Um, But let's get into the news. Before we do, if you're new here watching on my YouTube channel, please hit that subscribe button, regular Chelsea videos, breaking down the latest news, transfer rumours, all of that good stuff. And of course, when Chelsea do get back in action, previewing and reviewing all of the games. Uh, I've got Adam Newson, my good friend from Football London, the the main Chelsea reporter there, is going to be coming onto the podcast. We're going to speak about Chelsea in depth. So stay tuned for that. And if you are listening to the podcast, thank Thank you very much for tuning in. Son of Chelsea is a part of the 90 Min Podcast Network. I found out from some people already who are listening to the podcast and um, that is a little bit more convenient as I know listening to podcasts sort of in audio form rather than watching the videos, doing their chores out and about. Uh, so if you want to find uh, the, the podcast, very easy to do. Just search Son of Chelsea on your favorite podcast provider. Follow along, rate and review. It really does help us out. But let's get into the news. We're going to start off with... Yes, him, Cristiano Ronaldo, of course, had his contract terminated by Man United. Uh, I think they called it mutual consent. Uh, But we knew this was coming after that explosive interview with Piers Morgan. I spoke about the interview last week on the podcast. Uh, I I, I still think it was just a bizarre interview. Um, Listen, he's he's entitled to do it. And his number one fan, Piers Morgan, was always going to give him that platform to do it. No problem with Ronaldo having that, but you know there are consequences to doing that, and I think this is the best move. Just from kind of a unbiased thing, is just it's the best move for Eric Ten Hag, who you know for his squad currently it's been such a bad distraction after some very good results for Man United this season. I think they're doing a lot better than people anticipated them to this season, and a lot of that is because tactically. They don't have someone that doesn't suit what they need to do on the pitch. And I think that is definitely helping them. Um, But obviously, with Ronaldo having his contract terminated, and and as well, I just want to say, if you're a Man United fan, I think it was, what, Tuesday evening, the, the contract gets terminated. And then a few hours later, there's this sort of announcement or reports that the Glazers are going to sell the club as well. So it, it, mental few hours if you're a Man United fan. And then hearing the words or seeing the the, the words rain group um, sort of brought me back to some you know PTSD looking back to the spring of Chelsea's takeover. So glad that is all over. Um, but Matt Law released a report um, for the Telegraph. Chelsea have no plans to sign Cristiano Ronaldo after Man United exit. This is what is said in the report. Chelsea's Todd Bowley and Clear Lake Capital owners discussed the possibility of signing Ronaldo in the summer with former head coach Thomas Tuchel. Tuchel was against the move, but he has since been replaced by Graham Potter. But Telegraph Sport understands there are no current plans for Chelsea to sign Ronaldo as the club focuses on other targets. He does mention that Chelsea have already set up a deal to sign forward Christopher Nkunku from RB Leipzig at the end of the season. And he goes on to say that while Chelsea could look to sign a winger either in January or next summer much of their focus will be on strengthening the midfield and defense we will get to those targets because he also mentioned some big targets in his report as well but with Ronaldo you know my stance and you know Todd Bowley I've defended the guy I've been positive and you know I, I wrote that piece way back in March uh, before the takeover happened I, I felt that out of the the people trying to buy Chelsea I thought his consortium and, and him in particular was the best choice I still think that but I have to say, Todd, if you do go through this and sign Ronaldo, that article may have to uh, at least be edited um, because it just makes no sense on so many different levels. Um, tactically, you have a guy who doesn't want to press. Um, we've seen the effects at Man United and 
I've seen a lot of people sort of, you know, Chelsea fans, you know, because I, I tweeted something out negative about Ronaldo saying I just, it's an unserious move, you know, and it'd be the complete antithesis to what Chelsea need currently, particularly with the problems we've had signing players um, in the final third. And them not fitting. Just look at Romelu Lukaku. I mean, just look at Lukaku as a, as a prime example of why you don't do this. But the argument has been, well, who's going to score 15 goals for Chelsea this season? That's a fair point. Raheem Sterling is our top goal scorer. He's been much maligned in recent weeks. He's on five. That's a fair point. You know, Chelsea haven't had a consistent goal scorer, but that does not make Ronaldo the answer. Uh, because as we saw at Man United last season, Ronaldo scored about what, over 20 goals, I think it was in the end. But were Man United a good team last year? Did they have a good season? Did they qualify for the Champions League? The answer to all of those questions is no, because it's all about Ronaldo. It's all about him as an individual. You didn't hear anything from Ronaldo last season because things were going well for Ronaldo on the pitch. He was a key player. He was scoring goals. His reputation and his ego was being boosted on a regular basis. Um, but tactically, Man United were a shambles for a variety of reasons, not just down to Ronaldo, but he symbolise a lot of the problems, particularly from a tactical perspective of what Man United were lacking against top opposition they came up against. Uh, pressing, if you don't have players that press, I know people dismiss this, but I, I sometimes dis dismiss this because I think, you know, go goals obviously matter. But there is a, a clear, you know, distinction uh, between a, a guy who does score goals, but then also the fallout of that and where those goals are being scored. You know, are the team actually improving? Are they winning big games? Do they look cohesive? And that is exactly what Man United weren't last season compared to this season, where maybe they have someone up there who doesn't score as many goals like Marcus Rashford or Martial, but they tactically suit what Eric Ten Hag wants to do. And it's the same with Graham Potter. You know, Chelsea need positivity. They need harmony in that dressing room, which maybe they don't have currently. It, it it just it's it's throwing another grenade into a potentially toxic toxic situation for Graham Potter, and I just I just cannot see it at the moment uh, why it would make any sense to sign Ronaldo in January. Um, I just it makes no sense to me, you know, from a tactical point of view, from the character point of view. If he's not playing as we've seen at Man United this season, he takes the attention away. Um, all of you know the social media noise around Ronaldo. Chelsea just don't need that. At the current point, there are smarter options out there that sure may not get you all of the results currently and aren't big superstars, but hopefully in the long term will turn out to be smarter buys for Chelsea. And hopefully with Bowley, the, the team he started to build behind the scenes, they see that and there are other options Chelsea can go for if they do want to recruit. Uh, in attack in January but I actually think in attack that's not where the focus should be and as Matt Law reports in the Telegraph in the same piece Jude Bellingham and Declan Rice two of the big midfield targets even though Chelsea are not in pole position for either player two dream targets aren't they Jude Bellingham and Declan Rice uh, Rice has been the guy for several years I've said this I think it's a no-brainer signing Declan Rice I really do he's proven and he's he's not only shown that he could be a profile that Chelsea have lacked um, in the center of that of midfield that really durable and dominant and more mobile presence but he has added things onto his game I think that maybe people doubted his ability on the ball maybe in attack you know he's added some goals to his game too you just you look at all of the stats around Declan Rice, you look at how he's performed and, and West Ham this season are not having a good year. You know, they haven't really matched what they've done in recent seasons. They're really struggling. They've had some poor form under David Moyes. But Rice still in some of the numbers, particularly tackles, you know, those defensive attributes that Chelsea have lacked, still he's ranking pretty high. And um I, I, I think he is the guy and I and I also think there is a reality as I've mentioned before with West Ham, knowing with Declan Rice's contract situation, which runs out in 2024, that you can't let him go for free. And probably next summer is the last time you're going to be able to attract a really big fee. He isn't signing the contract. West Ham can't allow a talent like Declan Rice to just walk out the door for nothing. Chelsea want the player. We've known that Chelsea have been interested in the player for so long. And uh, I think that 2023 hopefully will be the year when Operation Rice is completed and we sign him for Chelsea because I do think he is the dream addition. Jude Bellingham, I think it's going to be a little bit more challenging and whether Chelsea are actually going to commit to two players. Uh, of course, we could see N'Golo Kante and Jorginho both leave next year. I think that is, you know, you have to address that and you have to think that that could be a possibility because we saw Antonio Rudiger and Andreas Christensen leave last year as well. So that could happen and that could open the door. Um, in January, we've heard about targets. Edson Alvarez, Moises Casado uh, from Brighton, I think is a really interesting player. 
is there an alternative? Is there someone out there in Europe who our new team can kind of uncover as a bit of a hidden gem and save a bit of money and, and promote someone you know, into Chelsea? We will see. But I, I think it's such a vital area and Rice and Bellingham. Bellingham more for his attacking attributes as we're seeing for England currently. Um, I just love him as a number eight. I think he's got those instincts in the box that Chelsea have lacked for so long. And he's also got that build where even as a young player, you can see how he could dominate in the Premier League. But Rice, for me, is the one. He's the no-brainer that I, I hope Chelsea do recruit in the summer because I think that's when it's mo- most likely. I can't see it happening in January, uh, but we will see. We will see. And, and let me know your thoughts on Declan Rice, on, on Jude Bellingham, who's obviously in the news currently and, and probably will be on the move to some big club uh, in the next year. But let's get into the final thing here. I just want to talk about the goalkeeping situation with Chelsea uh, because it has been a big debate point this year. Edward Mendy, who was on top of the world at the start of 2022, he was voted FIFA, I think, the, the best goalkeeper of 2021. You know, his, his involvement in Chelsea's Champions League win uh, last year as well and kind of being the certified number one choice that's not the case anymore um he hasn't been in good form and he hasn't started the world cup uh, in good fashion either you know the, the two goals that this that senegal conceded to the netherlands on monday night uh you could argue both were his fault particularly the second one um and it hasn't been good and obviously chelsea now kepa reza balaga has come back into form this season with graham potter that i don't think any of us expected and probably will be fit by the time chelsea return against bournemouth likely will be first choice We've got Gabriel Stanina uh, coming into the club in January uh, from Chicago Fire. What happens with him? I, I still think most likely he gets a loan. I just I don't see the benefit for an 18-year-old keeper coming into Chelsea, just sitting on the bench for the rest of the season. Uh, so I think the likely route for him is a loan in Europe. It may be the Premier League. It may be the Championship. We will see. Um, but Rob Prattley, who I have a reference here before, got some really good uh, sources you know, and, and reported a lot of good stuff over the, over the summer regarding Chelsea transfer first tweeted out this week Chelsea are considering a number of solutions for the goalkeeping situation Diogo Costa Jordan Pickford and Jan Oblak have all been considered to various extents along with many other names too uh, he also mentions Slanina's development also a factor in how it plays out it will be curious because once again it's an uncertain position I think there are several solutions and routes Chelsea could go down do you trust Mendy and hope that he recovers form um, that's obviously in itself a risk. He may have reached the pinnacle of his career already um, and that burst of form in the 2020-21 season was the peak of Mendy. A little bit obviously in 21-22 uh, where he made those ridiculous saves and he was kind of outperforming his numbers. Uh, but obviously in 2022, like Chelsea, things have dipped. Uh, but you hope that maybe as a goalkeeper he can rediscover that confidence and, and dominance that he showed at Chelsea. Do you stick with Kepa Riza Balaga? Do you think that he is the guy Chelsea should be going for? Do you try and develop Slanina? That's that's another big route that Chelsea could go down. But I still think he is quite young, obviously, and, and probably needs a little bit more seasoning, as you'd say, and, and, and those minutes may be on loan. Um, so then if you're going to commit to someone in 2023, it's going to be a big deal probably. You know, Chelsea would want to spend quite a bit of money and that would be a first choice option. Uh, Mike Magnon is, I think, another one that has been mentioned from AC Milan, um, who's been, you know, in reports in recent years. I think before we signed Edward Mendy, he was brought up as well. There are other ones out there. There are. And, uh, you know, it, it's a big position. It's a vital position that Chelsea have to solidify because we haven't had someone in that position who we've really trusted since T. Courtois, obviously, and and before then, Pat Check. You know, to have someone that you can rely on week in, week out, season in, season out is, is so key. It's a bit like central midfield, and to have two areas like goalkeeper and central midfield not be certain. You can see why Chelsea have had a lot of problems because those, for me, are vital, vital areas. You know, the spine of your team, striker, central midfield, goalkeeper. If those are problematic areas, you're not going to win a lot of football matches. And at the top level, you're going to be found out most of the time. And it's a shame because I like Mendy. I think the story of him, I said this a few weeks ago, the story of him has been amazing at Chelsea and he has been a success. I don't think anyone should turn around now and retroactively say he was never good. That's nonsense. He was very good for a year, probably over that at Chelsea. For 22 million, he was he has been one of Chelsea's better value signings. That has to be that has to be said. That has to be the case, you know. Um even though Kepa has come back into form, that is still a worse signing because, you know, 75 million and it's taken him quite a few years to put a run together of decent form. Um, and we don't know what he's going to be like, you know, 
heading into 2023. That may have just been a nice recovery. Kepa may, you know, revert back to some of his previous mistakes. We will see. But I definitely think this is an area, unfortunately, Chelsea will likely have to act in again. Let me know your thoughts on the goalkeeping situation in the comments below. But that is it for today's edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're keeping safe. Hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Let me know your thoughts on it in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. Hit that like button. Follow me on Twitter at Son of Chelsea and I will see you again very soon. All the best. 